adequately manage, uh, to allocate resources, to manage scenes, where the numbers of patients are beyond the resources of the essential elements responding to the scene. We, ad we address this with the number of patients at the time of dispatch. All response elements at a mass casualty incident or MCI coordinate to manage life safety. We'll address the triage patient sorting, assessment and treatment and transport concepts of the MCI based on SALT. My name is David Mendonca. I'm EMS and healthcare provider. This is an educational presentation. Please review your local, state, and federal protocols specific to your area of operations. The material that I used uh, in this presentation were borrowed and the link is provided below. The design or workflow of addressing the needs for the largest number of patients is key. This diagram, SALT, has three broad steps. Identified number one, sorting. Identified as number two, assessment. And identified as number three, treatment and transport. We'll, re re we'll review each step more in the video. Remember that information from the incident must be relayed to all response elements and those key participants downstream of this event. Ultimately, every agency and department should be updated with patient and scene information as it becomes more available or ready. So first stage, step one, in sorting, we call out to anyone that can walk to quickly locate them, organize and sort those into that group. This group will probably be staged in a triage lane and be assessed further at a later time. However, the theory is that these casualties are walking wounded and are better off than those that cannot. Potentially, we'd assign them a triage tag already and this would be marked color green in minimal. Second, we call out to those that are now can only wave, that are not mobile. They responded to voice and are coherent and follow commands. So potentially, we can already assign these patients another triage tag and we give them a lane assignment. Potentially or possibly yellow or green or a red, however we see fit. Now the remaining casualties or victims or patients that have not been mobilized and walked off, ambulated to a lane, or were waving, these ones are now the ones that are still. These should be marked immediately with some additional measures, but we're looking at probably giving them a red immediate or a black expectant. Basically, we have now quickly sorted all casualties. We have three different lanes potentially. Lane one, walking wounded, a green lane. Lane two, a non-walking but awake and waving yellow lane and three still remaining the non-ambulatory and non-waving now we brought them all back together so we can consider where we're at we know we have a mass casualty we have these three steps we took our first step by calling out the sword we quickly sort these casualties that can walk, wave, and those that are, remain still. This action can be taken as the first step for any unit that responds, regardless of their response role. Remain aware that the actual number of patients and to provide that information to communication centers and additional response elements. All groups will need further assessments as we move further down using our triage tag. Then reassessing all groups should begin. Remember green is for minimal. These would be patients that need to be seen for seeking care several hours or potentially could seek 
assistance and medical direction or guidance from a primary care provider. And the yellow, these are delayed patients. These require medical evaluations in about one to four hours. In red, these are immediate patients. They need to be mobilized and, and heading off to a medical facility as soon as transport is readily possible. And black would be expected. Now, as we dive into the actual triage tagging portion, and we now do a reassortment, this is a continuation of the triage. We'll assess each patient for life threats. If they fall into a category which requires the assessment and treatment of life threats, we quickly perform these immediate measures, such as hemorrhage control by tourniquet, manually open the airway to reestablish an airway and breathing, or needle thoracotomy or thoracentesis to alleviate the tension in the motorax. Our, our resuscitation efforts at this time, because of the type of case that we're on, mass casualty, which has overwhelmed the elements responding to this, we need to make sure we treat and transport the greater majority. So we would withhold potentially life-saving measures and resuscitative efforts that we would normally perform on expectant categories. Treatment and transport is the third step. Treatment and transport is usually coordinated by the first EMS unit. These guys stay on scene, they create the lanes of uh, triage, and eventually they can separate into a treatment and transport and readily updating this triage or sorting criteria. Either downgraded each category from minimal to delayed, delayed to intermediate, or intermediate to expectant. Patients are passed off to then oncoming or arriving EMS transport, either from a staging area or being dispatched in route. To review, the initial sorting of casualties or patients are quickly done by having all mobile, ambulatory, and walking to move to a single triage lane. And hopefully these are expected to be in a green or minimal category on the triage tag. Treatment of this group can be done at a later time after further sorting or triaging patients. The group of waving patients are moved into their own group. Potentially, these are a yellow category or delayed. This group will get a secondary assessment and resorted along or re triage along the way. The last group are the still patients that need to be assessed for life saving intervention. Again, tourniquets manual airway management, needle decompression. These patients will be colored red. And unless those life-saving measures assist in their, their um, acuity level or their status, these patients may be marked black or expectant. Treatment and transport is tied to the color of tag. Red is the immediate and highest priority. However, resorting and retriaging is often done, and our yellows can then sometimes degrade or deteriorate to a red category. Nevertheless, the status of these patients must be reevaluated over time. This is a brief overview. And I would say that this would be a good time to pause and or stop the video and perform a case review. Use it to practice and flow through the steps. I'd like to express that EMS makes the best decisions based on the information given at the time. Clearly, we have responded to cases where information is delayed or minimal at best. And we make the best decisions that we can at the time. Therefore, Learn from experiences, training events, and your ongoing education 
to build your situational and operational awareness to anticipate the coordination of resources to best serve the incidents. Lastly, please remember safety is a priority to keep yourself and the team safe as you manage these incidents. You are important and vital to our system. Finally, as such, these activities can weigh on us. It's important to have debriefing activities and these should be performed at some level, minimally at the crew, potentially at a station or multiple elements, or finally at a system level to mitigate the stress factor associated with these incidents. Remember, reach out to your peer and support group. And ultimately, there are other outreach services available to you all. This concludes the presentation.